am the Messiah. I am Marvel Jesus. The Marvel Messiah is back. If you've seen the new Deadpool 3 trailer, you know exactly what I'm talking about. After watching this trailer, I believe this movie is exactly what the MCU needs to save itself. Also, we can talk about how terrifying Deadpool is with a thick head of hair. Anyways, Marvel Studios' latest offering transcends all ideas of fan services, easter eggs, and, and interconnected nods to the broader Marvel Universe. What truly excites me about this trailer is its focus on exceptional filmmaking while incorporating breathtaking stunts, masterful shot composition, and gripping action sequences alongside dishing out the classic Deadpool humor. And thank the lord for the film to retain the R-rated tag because really, what is a Deadpool film without a good dose of adult scenes? That pegging comment honestly had me in a chokehold and these little tweaks are the very soul of Deadpool's character. Now, it feels like a return to the essence of great action cinema within the MCU, offering a compelling reason to experience the thrill of the big screen once more as it brings in a lot of X-Men characters back. This film has the potential to literally revitalize the Marvel Cinematic Universe by delivering a truly outstanding action movie experience because, let's just be honest, we've waited too long to see Deadpool and Wolverine become a part of the true continuity and share the bigger screen in the process. So, without wasting another second, let's find out whose new and old faces would be seen in the film. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Your chance to be a hero among heroes. How did we get to this film's premise in the first place? Now, this detour is important to understand all the fast-paced features we saw through the teaser in order to figure out exactly how Wade Wilson ended up where he was. So, in Deadpool 2, the Merc with a Mouth finds himself locked in combat with Josh Brolin's Cable, a time-traveling warrior on a mission to eliminate a troubled mutant named Russell. Now, this dude Russell was endowed with fury abilities and is destined for a dark future where he will basically murder Cable's daughter. Despite their initial conflicts, all characters unite against a sinister facility, exploiting young mutants and their powers. Now, Deadpool, armed with Cable's time-traveling device, alters his fate to avoid a Logan-style demise, but in the post credits scene, we see Negasonic Teenage Warhead and Yukio repair the device, enabling Deadpool to attempt rectifying various deaths, including his beloved Vanessa alongside his X-Force teammate's apparent death. In a bold move, Deadpool even went back in time, eradicating his own existence as Ryan Reynolds' pre-Green Lantern, and even pondering the assassination of Hitler as an infant in the extended cut. Deadpool also went on a mission to tidy up timelines as he stopped by the 2009 X-Men Wolverine film to meet up with Wolverine at the Three Mile Island facility to kill his alternate sealed mouth Weapon 11 form and taken off before mentioning how he might ask Wolverine to get back in the game again sometime in the future. Now in this teaser, Deadpool appears to be grappling with a midlife crisis, which ironically is similar to the current current state of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. This portrayal of Deadpool in an uninspiring job reflects a recurring motive throughout the trilogy where he has been seen taking on various roles, from his days as a merc to promoting himself on Dopinder's Taxi, and now in this teaser, working a mundane job. Not to forget the impending involvement of the TVA, aka the Time Variance Authority after Wade previously played around quite a bit with time travel. Plus, Deadpool's need for an alternate employment also somehow aligns well with the uncertainty following Fox's acquisition by Disney, because Ryan Reynolds' visit to Marvel Studios back in 2019, where he humorously auditioned for Anthony Stark's role, now feels like a prelude to this very moment. Moreover, the long-awaited return of Wolverine teases a payoff to the decade-long joke of Hugh Jackman's passive presence in the Deadpool films. Despite initial budget constraints preventing a Wolverine cameo in the first film, Deadpool humorously referenced him in both the films. Even Deadpool's death used the same background music as Wolverine's iconic death scene, underscoring the ongoing interplay between the characters. I love this part. Wait! The teaser revealed a major X-Men villain's debut on the MCU. With the third Deadpool installment expanding into the MCU's multiverse, the film promises to weave in familiar faces from the X-Men universe. A brief shot in the trailer showcases a mysterious figure, bowed headed and cloaked in a collared jacket, which bears a striking resemblance to Cassandra Nova, an infamous X-Men antagonist. Known for being a twisted reflection of Charles Xavier, Cassandra Nova is essentially his genetic doppelganger. 
created from his DNA. While the trailer offers no explicit confirmation of the character's identity, most speculation suggests that Emma Corrin may be portraying her. But Corrin's role as a pivotal villain has still been kept a secret, initially rumored to be danger before those rumors were dispelled. While awaiting official confirmation, we're left to ponder whether this subtleties heralds Corrin's portrayal of Cassandra Nova, potentially unveiling her as the movie's central antagonist. Mr. Wilson. You appear to have soiled yourself while unconscious. Marvel's Paradox will appear as the TVA agent in the film. The explosive preview for Deadpool and Wolverine introduces audiences to a slew of fresh faces including TVA agent Paradox, which is a character with a unique comic book collection powers. In the initial trailer, we witness Wade Wilson being apprehended by the TVA only to seemingly rebel against them by killing several TVA hunters. Naturally, a variant of Wolverine also makes an appearance alongside familiar characters from previous Deadpool outings. Now, Deadpool and Wolverine marks Paradox's inaugural foray into the MCU, with numerous characters making their MCU debut. Deadpool's arrival takes on added significance, a fact humorously acknowledged in the trailer when he dubs himself as the Marvel Jesus, after being offered a lofty role by Paradox. Despite this seemingly cordial exchange, the extent of their alliance remains uncertain, especially as Deadpool is later depicted battling TVA agents. For those wondering what the TVA exactly does, well, they are first introduced in Loki Season 1. The Time Variance Authority has evolved into a central element of the MCU's multiverse saga, dealing with the complexities of diverging timelines. Created by the Kang variant, He Who Remains, the TVA's mission is to safeguard the sacred timeline by eliminating divergent timelines through a process known as pruning. Hunters or the enforcers of this directive employ time sticks and reset charges to consign individuals from divergent timelines to a desolate void at the end of time. The Deadpool and Wolverine trailer prominently features the TVA's hunters and their equipment, prompting Deadpool to humorously confirm that his trademark R rating will remain intact under Disney's banner. Deadpool's antiques, particularly his time-hopping adventures in Deadpool 2, have evidently caught the attention of the TVA. However, following the events of Loki Season 2, the TVA's role has shifted towards nurturing new timelines, which raises intriguing questions about their motives in Deadpool and Wolverine. Now, Paradox in the film is being played by Matthew McFadden, serving as Deadpool's liaison within the TVA similar to what Mobius was to Loki. Known for his versatility, McFadden appears to embrace the persona of an English gentleman for his portrayal of Paradox, presenting himself as a more buttoned-up TVA agent compared to his colleague Mobius. On a side note, in Marvel Comics, Mr. Paradox has a brief but significant role as the presiding judge over She-Hulk's trial in She-Hulk Volume 2. As a member of the TVA, his powers are vast yet constrained, akin to his colleagues. During the trial, his ruling nearly erases Jennifer Walters from existence as punishment for her interference in the timeline. In an unexpected turn, both Paradox and Ouroboros meet their demise during the trial, courtesy of the minor villain Clockwise. However, Marvel seems poised to elevate Paradox's significance in the MCU, mirroring the approach taken with Ouroboros. Despite this divergence, there remains a parallel between the two versions of Paradox, their interactions with Marvel's fourth wall breaking characters. Happy birthday to you! <laughs> All characters most definitely appearing in Deadpool and Wolverine? Because we've already spoken about Paradox, we will leave that one out. But with Deadpool set to shake up the entire MCU, let's take a look at all the other characters we saw in the teaser. Don't just stand there, you ape. Give me a hand up. Nope, I'm actually okay. Wolverine. He may be the best at what he does, but what he does isn't always pleasant. We already know that Hugh Jackman's Wolverine is set to co-lead in Deadpool 3 as he reluctantly teams up with Wade. After portraying the character for 24 years, Jackman will finally don Logan's iconic yellow uniform we see in the comics. While the glimpse of Jackman's return to the role in a non-Fox iteration of the X-Men character was brief, the unmistakable backshot of Wolverine's iconic hairstyle during a poker game leaves no doubt as to his identity, even from behind. Moreover, his attire featuring a white suit pays homage to Logan's infamous alter ego, Patch. This persona emerges whenever Wolverine finds himself in bad rapport, donning an eye patch, a stylish white suit, and a bow tie, and rest assured, 
that unmistakable figure is indeed Hugh Jackman. Now, Jackman's anticipation in Deadpool and Wolverine offers the opportunity to finally capitalize on Deadpool's relentless jokes about his relationship with Wolverine. Moreover, it sets the stage for Marvel Studios to introduce the MCU's new face for Wolverine as Jackman's involvement is expected to be temporary, with a new actor eventually taking over his iconic role. Ryan Reynolds also assured that Deadpool 3 wouldn't interfere with the timeline of the new upcoming Logan, where Wolverine meets his emotional heartbreaking demise. Tony Stark style. So that suggests Jackman's presence alongside Deadpool may be brief. Nonetheless, the prospect of Reynolds and Jackman teaming up for an adventure in Deadpool and Wolverine is quite an exciting aspect in itself. Luckiest man alive. <laughs> Make a wish, buddy. Vanessa. As you know, Morena Baccarin portrayed Wade's girlfriend Vanessa in the first two Deadpool films. Her character's demise at the start of the sequel served as a driving force for Deadpool's journey throughout the film. However, thanks to the magic of time travel, Wade managed to alter the course of events and prevent Vanessa's death, ensuring her return in Deadpool 3. Baccarin's presence is essential to the essence of a Deadpool movie, and her hinted transformation into copycat adds another exciting dimension to her character. Now, Copycat, much like Mystique, possesses shape-shifting abilities, allowing her to change her appearance at will. While the first film teased Vanessa's diverse roles, a concept initially intended for the second film, it's clear that the creative team has long harbored plans for her transformation into Copycat, a storyline eagerly anticipated by most MCU fans. I want some more. I bet you do, Brown Panther. Dopinder. Karan Sony reprises his role as Dopinder, the taxi driver and a friend of Deadpool, who harbors dreams of becoming a contract killer like Wade. Dopinder was last seen in the climatic battle of Deadpool 2, where he intentionally rammed one of the villains with his cab. In the teaser, we saw him right at the beginning celebrating Wade's birthday alongside all his other friends and family. Negasonic Teenage Warhead Brianna Hildebrand embodies the character of Negasonic Teenage Warhead on the big screen, although at this stage, she might be better known as Negasonic 20-something Warhead. As a powerful member of the X-Men crew, she possesses the ability to generate explosive energy bursts from her body. As recurring characters in the franchise, Yukio and Negasonic are depicted as a couple. In an interesting bit of trivia, Negasonic's shorter hair in the first film was intended to demonstrate that her powers caused it to burn off when activated. However, in the sequel, Brianna Hildebrand, who plays Negasonic, allows her hair to grow out because of the actress's commitment to other projects. But we can't really live till we die a little, can we? Blind AI. It was Leslie Uggams who portrays the quick-witted blind AI, a blind yet sharp elderly woman who happens to be Deadpool's roommate. Like many other cast members in Deadpool 3, she has graced the screen in both previous Deadpool films. Blind AI's role expanded after she imparted wisdom to Deadpool on costume maintenance, inspiring him to craft his iconic red suit. Uggams' comedic talents have contributed some of the most memorable moments in the previous films, making her return as Blind AI in Deadpool 3 highly anticipated. The extent of her involvement in the MCU alongside Deadpool remains uncertain, leaving fans wondering if this marks her final adventure in the Marvel Universe. Colossus Another prominent member of the X-Men, Colossus has played significant roles in the first two Deadpool films. Portrayed through computer-generated imagery and motion capture, Stefan Kapisik lends his voice to bring the character to life. Colossus possesses the ability to transform into a metallic form, although we have never seen his human form within the Deadpool franchise. In Deadpool 3, Colossus's appearance has been slightly altered with his design updated to reflect an increased CGI budget. Yukio. Shioli Katsuna's character Yukio holds a special place in the X-Men roster within the Deadpool universe, and particularly in the heart of her girlfriend, Negasonic Teenage Warhead. Yukio possesses an electricity-based power set, and in Deadpool 2, she was last seen bidding farewell to Wade as Negasonic Teenage Warhead's partner and fellow X-Men. Yukio's mutation grants her the ability to manipulate electricity. Last but not least, Peter. Am I getting catfished here, or...? 
Peter. So Rob Delaney's character Peter was the only ordinary individual without any superpowers who found himself recruited into Deadpool's X-Force in Deadpool 2 simply by responding to an advertisement. Despite meeting his demise in the film, Wade's time-traveling antiques altered the course of events, ultimately saving Peter's life. This paves the way for Peter to reprise his humorous role in Deadpool and Wolverine. I'm the worst one. Pyro. There's exciting news for fans of the original X-Men movies because Aaron Stanford is officially reprising his role as Pyro in Deadpool 3 as seen by his glimpse in the teaser. Known for his pyrokinetic abilities, Pyro manipulates fire, though he doesn't create it himself, instead he controls existing flames using a lighter or other means. We speculate Pyro appears alongside scavengers in what seems to be a wasteland-like setting. This opens up two intriguing possibilities within the context of Deadpool's involvement with the Time Variance Authority TVA and the multiverse. Firstly, Pyro could be from an alternate universe possibly resembling the desolate landscape seen in the Old Man Logan series where familiar characters navigate a world overrun by villains. Alternatively, Pyro might find herself in the void, a realm at the end of time featured in Loki where remnants of the universe are deposited. If Pyro has been displaced in time by the TVA and consigned to this purgatorial realm, could he be just one of the many classic X-Men movie characters making a return? Well, I simply can't wait to find out. My name's Rusty, but I go by Shatterstar. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Shatterstar. So, Louis Tan reprises his role as Shatterstar in Deadpool and Wolverine as revealed in the movie's trailer. Shatterstar is spotted amongst Deadpool's group of friends cheering during Wade Wilson's birthday celebration, signaling that Deadpool's time travel endeavors at the end of Deadpool 2 were successful, thus sparing the X-Force team from their untimely demise. Buck. Randall Reeder's character Buck makes a return as one of the guests at Wade's birthday bash. Having been part of both previous Deadpool films, Buck is well known as a regular visitor to Sister Margaret's School for Wayward Children, the establishment serving as both a bar and dispatch center for mercenaries. Other casting rumors in the film. So remember Patrick Stewart and Ian McKellen who made their debut as Professor X and Magneto respectively in 2000's X-Men and have since portrayed the iconic mutants in various X-Men projects? Well, Stewart retired from his role in Logan, he returned as a variant of Professor X and Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness and hinted at his involvement in Deadpool 3. Stewart even mentioned being on standby, suggesting a potential comeback in the upcoming Phase 5 film. In an interview, Stewart teased the possibility of a Professor X and Magneto reunion in Deadpool 3, stating that he and McKellen are not done and have plans. While Marvel Studios has yet to confirm Stewart and McKellen's return, their potential inclusion in Deadpool 3 opens up exciting narrative possibilities and could set the stage for a reunion of the entire X-Men team from Fox's franchise. Although Stewart appeared as Professor X in Logan and Multiverse of Madness, McKellen hasn't portrayed Magneto since 2014's X-Men Days of Future Past, making his potential return in Deadpool 3 highly anticipated. As far as rumors fly, we've also heard that Owen Wilson might just show up for a short time here, reprising his role as the TVA agent, Mobius. Wilson made his debut in Phase 4's Loki Season 1 as the TVA agent Mobius, and made his return in Season 2 following a cameo in the post credit scene of Ant-Man and Wasp Quantumania. This speculation about his return aligns with Deadpool's potential involvement in the multiverse, bridging Fox's franchise with Marvel Studios' MCU. Wilson's portrayal as Mobius in Deadpool 3 could serve as a seamless connection between Deadpool and the broader MCU, while also establishing new ties between the variant Loki and the main MCU continuity. Now, we already believe Cassandra Nova will appear as the major villain named Danger in the film, but there have also been rumors that the highly anticipated third installment of Deadpool is poised to feature a plethora of other major cameos with one widely reported inclusion being Jennifer Garner as Electra Nachios. Although she never really affirmed to this rumor being true, Electra was a master assassin from Daredevil and Electra films released around the mid-2000s. If she does make a cameo, this will likely be accomplished through the power of the Marvel multiverse. Additionally, rumors abound that Taylor Swift may make an appearance in the film too, potentially portraying the character of Dazzler, who is a mutant with the ability to convert sound into energy beams, a role that Swift's talents could seamlessly bring to life. And the world is surely raving about Taylor's debut in the MCU, given her close friendship with Ryan Reynolds. Marvel's Verdict I think Deadpool and Wolverine will make up for all the screw-ups the MCU has done in the past few years. I mean, the sheer excitement of seeing everyone surreal about an upcoming MCU film 
is just enough to understand what an amazeball, Deadpool humor crazed movie this one is bound to be. Plus, I honestly think this version of Wolverine will be much different than what we've seen yet, and I'm totally here for it. What do you guys think about this one? Let us know in the comment box below.